Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the Summer of Carnage right here on the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to talk about the last issue, the last tie-in issue for Absolute Carnage that came out this week. And that is Absolute Carnage Separation Anxiety number one. This is a one-shot. And uh, I was surprised, honestly. Like when this was coming out, I was a little excited because I'm like, hey, cool. We get to see the four other Life Foundation symbiotes. So this week we actually got, between Scream and these guys, we got all five Life Foundation symbiotes back in one week, which was pretty cool. Um, but this issue I thought was just a stronger issue because it felt like a horror story and I thought that was the whole point of Absolute Carnage was to make it a strict horror story uh, whereas this one just felt like more of a clunky action movie um, with some horror elements like a Resident Evil movie maybe uh, this felt more like an actual horror story and I, I dug it a lot it was really creepy um, the, you know, so we have uh, Riot, Phage, Lasher and Agony here uh, the last time we saw them and we did cover them recently because uh, they were they were the four symbiotes and then they became hybrid as you know and we did we covered those in the hybrid episodes of this show and then they got uh, they I guess they got bonded to Deadpool at one point we're going to get to that coming up and then when Deadpool got rid of them the four symbiotes split apart and they bonded with a dog and they're all kind of just hanging out on this dog and that was the last time we ever seen uh, you know these four symbiotes so this book opens in Colorado with the dog and the dog comes across this little kid who's crying on her front porch and is like you know what's you know goes up to her and the girl's like look my mom and dad are yelling we're about to move you know like my parents are splitting up uh, I just want us to be a family and I guess they just can't put their differences aside so um you know and then the mom's like get in here we're leaving we're leaving she's like all right I gotta go and then as she's going to the door she sees the dog and is like oh you want to come inside okay like, come inside I'll sneak you in and you know you can come meet my little brother and we'll just let our parents argue for a little bit and then she brings the uh, the dog in and then all hell literally breaks loose because the the call from null has been inside this dog's head and inside the four symbiotes and now the four symbiotes have been driven crazy by null by listening to its call and start attacking this family and the family has four members uh, there's the little brother there's the sister and the mom and the dad who are about to get divorced and they're arguing and stuff and their argument escalates the situation irritates the symbiotes and the and the null calling that's coming to them and then the suits go crazy and i'm not going to go into uber detail on what happens in this book um and i said before i go any further i will say the digital code i'll give that out too real quick boom there's the digital code first person to put that code in gets the book so if you get it let me know down in the comments below and let me know what you think of the book as well um so but from here on out it's just madness <laughs> it's just horror story times 10 because you you're following children um, and you're seeing their parents get mutilated and, and kind of torn apart. A neighbor comes over, something bad happens there, and it escalates to a really disturbing level. Very, um, I, I mentioned Scream was like a Resident Evil movie. This felt more like Resident Evil 7, the video game almost, where it was like a, a family that's getting driven crazy by a parasite inside their body. Um, and, and one by one, each member is getting taken down. And Zoe in the video game, Resident Evil 7, she's kind of the last one of the family to convert. And once again, and her brother Lucas was converted, her mom and dad was converted. And just like that here, this little girl, uh, like Zoe, is the last one to get converted. So um, so it reminded me a lot of Resident Evil 7 in a way, uh, like the, the precursor story of Resident Evil 7 about the, uh, the Baker family. Family. So uh, yeah, it had a lot of that go into it, but I liked that. I, I liked that horror element uh, from that video game and seeing it here and you really got invested. I felt connected and you cared. Like I have a little brother myself. So I was like, wow, I really care about how the lengths this little girl's going to protect her little brother. And then in the end, uh, when she kind of fails, it is really heartbreaking. And uh, I am anxious to see where this goes. They even do like a full dinner table scene, which I'm not going to show you because it's so gruesome, but it also kind of reminds me of the dinner table scene in Resident Evil 7. Um, so yeah, it was it's intense. Uh, the person who wrote this, um, I, I can't remember his name, uh, he wrote all the one-shot stories, Clay McLeod Chapman. He wrote all the little one-shot stories. He also wrote that little like um, um, Ravencroft Institute thing, the interview with Carnage at the end of the, the main issue of the Absolute Carnage number one. Um, and he did all like the one-shot prequels stories that came out for like the post credit scenes in June and July so um this was his first full book and I gotta say even though it pretty much like had a lot of elements from uh, Resident Evil 7 in there uh it still I thought was really good and Brian Lovell's artwork I thought was fantastic Jordan Boyd did the colors and I thought they were really great and matched the art very well um and VC's Travis Lanham did the lettering and uh and yeah that was great too and even the layouts and the panel designs in this uh, and how crazy it gets and how much they focus on the horror I mean like this page right here I'll just show you real quick where Lasher's symbiote's coming in and it's like the spiral page kind of a reminiscent to Null but also like you know adding a great 
panel layout for a page. It's fantastic. It's so really cool and creepy and it, it was executed really well. And I got to say, like, this surprised me. I was like, wow, this is great. And where it ends, it basically says to be continued in absolute carnage. So I'm going to guess that at some point in that miniseries, uh, we're going to see these characters show up again, now all bonded with, uh, you know, crazed symbiotes that Null has taken over. Uh, but these were once heroic symbiotes uh, when they were attached to hybrid or when they were hybrid and attached to um, the guy who was, you know, Washington, uh, who was underneath the hybrid costume. Uh, but then also with Deadpool, they try to do the right thing and take down Carnage. So I'm curious to see what happens. Like, does the, the Null talking have long-lasting effects? Obviously, the main uh, Venom symbiote, it had to go through, like, a really intense thing with Malekith and everything to get its mind wiped to the point where the, the Null suit can't talk to him anymore. So I'm wondering if maybe they'll come up with a way uh, with using something like some kind of a uh, Norse technology or or something from Asgard or something to uh, you know to help separate the noise that that uh, you know Noel is sending out the signal that he's sending out I'm kind of curious to see if that's uh, like a step they'll go through because I'm hoping these people survive I mean <laughs> but they might not I mean it's a horror story and chances are a lot of people are going to die in this uh, but uh, this felt like the proper tone for the book like when I read Absolute Carnage number one I was like this is great because it's a, a superhero thing but it's definitely grounded in a horror and environment um, and this was just straight horror that I thought kept in tone with what Donny Cates was doing in the main book whereas Scream I didn't really get that feeling I felt like it was it felt more of a, a departure from the tone of the the series um, but the, you know these are just my opinions obviously you guys will have different ones and some of you may have the same ones so whatever they are let me know down below and we'll continue our conversation down there for sure um, but yeah that's my thoughts on separation anxiety I just thought overall it was great out of the two tie-ins this, uh, this week that came out I thought this was the strongest one uh, by a landslide in my opinion and I hope this guy this Chapman guy writes more stuff and does more you know part I hope I see his name again in this series uh, throughout the tie-in issues I don't know I can't remember I didn't look up all the creative teams on the books uh, but I might go look now and see if he's going to pop up again because uh, I'd like to see at least a little bit more from him before the series is over and hopefully more from him as the series progresses uh, after this for sure so anyway let me know what your thoughts are down below thank you so much as always for your time and watching the show like share subscribe all that fun stuff and as always I'll see you in the future peace